Hello, and welcome to this tutorial on workspace customization for CorelDRAW. When working in CorelDRAW, there are a number of tools, toolbars, and menu items that you have access to. The specific placement of these is referred to as the workspace. One of the main strengths of CorelDRAW is the ability to customize this workspace. One would customize the workspace for a couple of reasons. It may be to match that of another program that you may be used to using, or to improve the workflow. By customizing the workspace, we can increase productivity and greatly reduce the time that it takes to complete a design. First off, looking at the interface, across the top is the standard drop-down menu. Below this is the standard toolbar that provides quick access to common commands, and below that is the property bar or context-sensitive property bar. Down the left-hand side, we have the toolbox. Along the bottom, our page navigation, and the status bar. Finally, down the right-hand side, we have dockers as well as color palettes. Let's get started with changing some of the default settings. From the Windows menu, go down to Dockers, and we're going to select Object Styles. Within the Object Styles docker, expand Default Object Properties. Now for me to change the properties of my artistic text, I simply have to select artistic text and I have all the parameters that I may wish to modify. I can change my font, I can change my point size, as well as color and a number of other variables within here. And now if I type a piece of artistic text, it will take on the properties that I've chosen within the docker. Changing the defaults for graphic styles is equally as easy. Simply select graphic. I can change my line weight, line color, as well as line style. And now when I create a graphic element, it will take on these properties. The ability for me to adjust QR code settings is a feature of the premium membership. Now we'll look at the toolbars. If you right click on a blank area, you'll see a list of available toolbars. Those that have the check marks to the left of them are the ones that are currently being displayed on the screen. Selecting one will toggle the state on and off. First, I'm going to select Lock Toolbars, and this will unlock my toolbars. Next, another right mouse click, I'm going to select the Layout. This will bring out my Layout Toolbar. You'll notice that I can take any toolbar and dock it anywhere on the screen. Toolbars, once they are unlocked, will have a small gripper bar, and this will allow me to take a toolbar, bring it off the screen, and put it wherever I'd like to. If I double-click the title bar across the top of it, it will put the toolbar back in its place. Now, depending on what you use CorelDRAW for, it will determine what tools or menu items you use most often. I have certain tools and features that I use more frequently, so I'll customize the interface in the way that I usually work. I'm going to left click over top of my blend tool and that will allow the flyout to come out. I'll grab my gripper bar, pull that out, and I can actually pull that off on the screen. Now, for me to create a toolbar, it's simply a matter of holding down my control plus alt key. I'm going to select the tool that I want and I'll left click and drag and drop this on the desktop. This will start the creation of a new toolbar. I'm going to grab my drop shadow tool and I'll put that out beside that as well. I've taken the tools from here that I want, so I'll just close this off. I haven't lost it, it's still here, but I've taken that out of the way. Now the next tool I want to grab is the Power Clip Frame tool. So from my Layout Toolbar, holding down the Control plus Alt key, I'll left click and drag, and as I bring this to this toolbar, you'll notice that I have an eye beam, and this will dictate my insertion point for that particular tool. One more tool that I want to add to this is the Fit Text to Path or Text on a Path tool. Let me move the toolbar over here. Now, from my text menu, and of course I can grab tools from any of my drop-down menus, again, holding down the Control plus Alt key, I'll go down to Fit Text to Path, I'll select this item, drag it over, and I'll drop this on the toolbar. I now have the ability directly on screen on this toolbar to do Fit Text to Path. I'll pull out the Layout Toolbar and I'm going to close that off. And now I can dock this toolbar wherever I'd like to. 
I'm going to create a second toolbar. Now, when I draw an object with my freehand tool, once the object has been created, you'll notice on my interactive property bar that I have certain settings that I can use to modify this line style. I can make it a hairline, I can change the point size, and that sort of thing. If I need to change line styles when I have multiple objects selected, I'll need to create a toolbar for that. Simply select a single line style, and again, holding down the Control plus Alt key, I'm going to drag these elements right off the toolbar and create a new toolbar that I can then use. Simply a matter of dragging and dropping the elements that I want. Now one other element that I'd like to add to this new toolbar is the outline pen color. So from the tools menu down to customization, I'm going to select commands and then within the commands drop down, I want to select fill and outline. I'm going to scroll through here and I'm going to select my outline pen. These are in alphabetical order. Here's my outline pen color, so I'll drag and drop, and I'll just put this into my new toolbar. I click OK, and I've completed that. Now for me to change multiple line styles at the same time, it's simply a matter of selecting those objects, and I can come through here and pick whatever features that I want to give that. It's as easy as that. Let's just dock this up onto my standard toolbar, and we're ready to go on to the next area. Before I do, let's see how easy it is to use my new toolbar. I'll delete these elements, select my piece of text, I'll turn this into a power clip frame, and now it's simply a matter of dragging and dropping on top of this piece of text. I can hold the control key down, click on the text and do my editing, control click outside of that. Next what I can do is I'm just going to draw a quick little envelope in this, and we'll add a drop shadow. Very quick, very easy. I've been able to create a nice little effect by using a simple toolbar that I've put onto my desktop. Now, let's move on to the next area. We're going to take a look at some keyboard shortcuts. From the Tools menu, go down to Customization, select Commands, and then select shortcut keys. To create a keyboard shortcut is simply a matter of selecting the item that you want to apply the shortcut to and simply assigning the proper keys. Now quite often I'm dealing with uh, editing nodes and I have to toggle back and forth between wireframe and enhanced view. So if I go to my view menu, in here we'll see those two elements. One is wireframe, and of course to go into wireframe, I like to use the letter W. It's easy to remember. I'll simply select Assign. To get myself out of wireframe, I have to go to the Enhanced view. So I'm going to select the Enhanced, and rather than using the letter E, which is currently assigned to evenly uh, align, I'm going to select the letter Q. And an easy way to remember that is I want to quit wireframe. I also deal with multi-page documents quite a bit, so the other one I want to do is Page Sorter View. I'm going to scroll down to Page Sorter View, I'll select New Keyboard Shortcut, and I'm simply going to tap the letter S. I don't want to use P because that's currently assigned to Center of Page, and I'll simply click the Assign button. That's all there is to it. Very easy to create keyboard shortcuts. Other keyboard shortcuts that you might want to do is the letter G for Group, the letter U for ungroup, or if you're used to Adobe Illustrator or another application and you're used to the keyboard shortcuts used there, then it's, of course you can certainly uh, define those in uh, CorelDRAW when you do your customization. I'm going to simply select OK to this, and now you'll see that if I hit the letter W, I go into wireframe, Q is quit wireframe, and of course S is going to take me into page sorter view. And finally, we want to be able to save the current customizations, not only to reload on another system that we may have, but we can also use it to send to our colleagues. From the tool menus, select options. I'm going to highlight the word workspace, and you can see here I'm currently using the default workspace. I also have the ability to select an Adobe Illustrator workspace that comes with CorelDRAW when you first install it. 
Instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select my X6 default workspace. I can select export and then simply highlight the items or the elements from within the workspace that I want to export. I have the ability to save this as a file or email it. Of course, if I select email, it's going to launch my email package and it's going to allow me to send this out. Simply a matter of creating the file. and clicking on save. That's all there is to it. Thanks very much and I hope you've uh, learned a couple of things here that will allow you to be much more productive in CorelDRAW.